So this is my eight string acoustic bass. Over the past year or so, I've been getting quite a few comments on a short video I made a while back that I did just as a, a funny, just a funny joke. Um, and plenty of people were commenting on this video where I'm drilling a hole into this guy and everyone's saying, well, you've ruined a bass. Why are you doing that? You've, you, you're inflicting uh, emotional pain on people. Um, you've ruined a perfectly good bass. Oh, you know, I, I wouldn't ruin a perfectly good bass. Um, so I just want to thank everyone for commenting. We're all on, on YouTube here for fun. So uh, yeah, I think it's great that we can all uh, have fun and, and um, leave comments and, and have a laugh and, and, and share stuff together. So to uh, explain the situation, this is not a perfectly good bass. Uh, I'll, I'll try to put the link to my review on this bass but I paid 80 US dollars for this. It's brand new, that's how they sell them. I didn't get this second hand. So if you're going to pay $80 for an instrument that's already quite a rare niche product, you can't expect to get a very good product. So uh, what you get for an $80 acoustic bass is not good. The projection is very poor. So. Projection is the ability for the instrument to get the sound out there. So if you're sitting next to someone directly around a campfire, um, sure, they'll be able to hear it, but beyond that, the projection is very poor on this instrument, out of the box. Right now I'm describing the out of box experience. Of course it's going to come with awful strings, uh, and you as the player, um, you will not be able to hear this instrument. When you are playing it, it is extremely quiet. and when you are playing with other players, if they've got a six string, heaven forbid they've got a 12 string and they're bashing out chords, you will not hear this instrument. So this, again, $80 instrument, it's, it's glossy and it looks very nice in videos because in videos you can't really see all the blemishes up close. The immense amount of manufacturing flaws, the poor construction and manufacturing, the, the cheap materials, this is a terrible, terrible instrument. But I purchased that because I wanted a project instrument. I wanted to work on an instrument. What I wanted to build was an eight string bass with octave strings. Let's go ahead and have a close look at the head of the instrument here. Now, looking back, I think um, if I were to redo this instrument or do a second one, uh, this one, unfortunately, it puts so much tension that it's difficult to get guitar strings that can stretch that far. So, or that reach that far. What I would do is I would just take that, I would probably move it here, uh, seeing that there actually is room for it. So I, I that's something that I would uh, do in the future. Um, you can see that I've put a uh, Dobro tailpiece on here, and that is to get the bass strings on there. Now, originally the bass strings were mounted on this tailpiece. Originally, uh, I had a trapeze tailpiece, and that held the guitar strings, but unfortunately the, all the extra tension was actually causing the top to cave in. So this instrument is very poorly um, uh, built and it's not 
uh, well um, uh, uh, braced on the inside. So um, having that uh, torque applied. So when you have strings that are mounted to the top, you're having an angled torque. So it's actually moving like that. And um, the tension with the base strings, I put heavy bass strings on there. I, I uh, tried um, quality strings, uh, different strings. Um, I used phosphor bronze, they were heavy gauge, and I thought if I use a heavy gauge, um, maybe I'll be, get more resonance out of the top and I'll get more projection. But it turned out that didn't really turn out for the best. I could um, tell that the instrument was more muted than it should have sounded using the heavy gauge strings. And they were pretty expensive. I've set them aside, I've used them in other projects. Uh, there were a few things I've tried as well. I've, I've tried uh, as much, you know, I tried an, uh, an O port. You sort of stick this cone, uh, inverted cone, inside. Um, some people uh, report that with particular instruments it does help lower frequencies uh, with projection. In this case, that did not help at all. Uh, in this case, it either made negligible uh, difference or it, it didn't help uh, or it, it actually made things worse uh, in this particular situation. But people have reported that O-ports do work uh, depending on the instrument. So it's on a case-to-case -case basis. So I removed the trab piece and I used a Dobro tailpiece and I moved the bass string. So um, what I did was I got a light gauge uh, brass set. This is a cheap, generic, uh, no brand uh, set of strings that I ordered from China because I wanted to get the absolute lightest gauges possible. And it turned out that using that light gauge brass set is what sounds best for this particular instrument. And that's because, again, it wasn't built to be a particularly good instrument. It wasn't built um, with much consideration to the quality of tone or projection. So using those thinner brass strings works out very well. I've moved the strings onto this Dobro tailpiece, but because guitar strings tend to be a bit short, uh, the strings that I had in stock uh, weren't long enough to sit on the Dobro tailpiece. I would have liked to put them on the tailpiece so you can see I've got my guitar strings actually sitting on the bridge there. I'm going to zoom in there and show how I butchered that. So I experimented with this instrument a fair bit and all of that butchering comes uh, from when I had the uh, all the strings on the uh, bridge. Now the brake angle was actually quite bad as well when I had the, the trapeze tailpiece on there. And you can see I have had to carve out because I need the strings to not contact the bridge. So that's going to uh, reduce the brake angle, which means that it's going to cause the angle at which it attacks the bridge it's going to be more flat which is not good for tone or projection and you don't want it touching the wood because that's going to produce wolf tones and other weird har harmonic stuff and uh, that's really uh, something you want to avoid so I had to carve uh, into that uh, in the future if I can get all the strings onto this Dobro tailpiece what I would just do is um, probably get a router and just sit at um, even that out and sand that off so it doesn't look so rough but um, no one really ever comments on that, so when I play this with people, um, they generally just say, wow, that sounds um, pretty cool. So no one ever says, hey, that looks like a, a, a pretty jacked up down there, you know, and I'm sure people are just being nice. What, I, what I've been meaning to do is just use my heat gun and remove this. I don't really want that pick guard on there. Uh, I don't think it's fitting for a bass. Now you can use your fingers. In general, I'll, I'll use my fingers to play bass. <laughs> In this particular situation, I want the clarity of having the octave strings ringing out, and you can get a much cleaner um, follow through if you use a pick. So I'm just using a mandolin pick here. It says it says three millimeter on it. I don't know if you look for a mandolin pick, um, but in this situation, because it's an acoustic uh, bass, they generally don't have great projection anyway. Other acoustic basses will know what I'm talking about, especially when you're people that are bashing out chords. So in that situation, of course, I'll want to use the uh, pick, and that helps uh, with a, a louder, clearer sound, and that helps you really jump in and, and join the mix of the sound that's going on in the room. <laughs> The 
guitar strings I'm using on here are light gauge as well, and that is because they have to cover a longer scale length, which means more tension. I had to pay close attention to this guy for a few months to make sure that this new setup wasn't also causing the top to cave in, but in this situation, uh, this seems to be quite stable. Now this is such a bad instrument. Uh, the, the slot that was cut out for the saddle, this is actually maybe the second or third saddle that I've cut out for this guy as I had to keep experimenting. But the slot for the saddle is actually too wide, so I actually had to cut up a guitar pick to shim uh, up that slot so that the saddle didn't lean forward as the strings were tuned up. That is uh, pretty much this is the Really, it's the perfect um, hobby instrument because uh, if you want to tinker and, and create your own sound, this, this is great. It's a great starting point. Again, I only paid 80 bucks. I think I got free shipping on it as well, so I'm not going to complain. So many people were saying, oh, you've ruined it. You drilled a hole into it. Why did you put a hole in it? So I do have a sound port in there. And that affects all kinds of things with the physics and, and, the, and the tone, but my priority with this sound port was to allow the player, me, to be able to hear the sound. And people have said, well, do sound ports actually make a difference? There's a very easy test. Cover the sound port with your hand and play it. And with that, I can barely hear what's going on. I can tell that there's sound coming out, but it's so muffled and unclear. And then if I remove that, all of a sudden I get a nice clear sound that I actually get to experience as a player. Now, you're sitting over there, you, you know, the microphone is there, you're at a distance, so you wouldn't be able to tell what I'm hearing from here. And even if I set a microphone over here, unless I set up my, my good, decent quality studio rig, it's, it's gonna be hard to tell even if I stick a phone here. I've got nothing to prove to anybody, so you can take my word for it, or you can just say that I'm a liar. So, it doesn't bother me. So. Really, uh, if you can find a shop, if, if you really want to see the difference, find a guitar shop, look for a guitar with a sound port, ask the shop if you can try the sound port, and then uh, try that. Uh, find a guitar with a sound port and cover it, play it, take your hand off the sound port and play it, and you'll hear the difference. Now, I've heard Luthiers uh, report that in terms of physics, air travels in and out of the hole. Uh, the sound hole um, simultaneously and especially for lower frequencies such as the bass range that causes the sound to become more muffled and that causes issues. There's so many things in terms of physics um, that affect um, the uh, acoustic bass. So, um, so Luthiers report that when you have a sound port um, it aids airflow and it allows better uh, clarity and projection. How true that is I don't know, but I'm going to, to uh, listen to as many luthiers as I can. I'll, I'll gather as much information as I can, and then you just play it by ear to see what sounds good to you, and really that's what matters at the end of the day. People have reported that in audiences that are sitting pretty close, like front row, you know, a couple feet away or whatever, they'll say that when a guitar, you know, if two guitars are played and they're testing the sound port, they'll play one with the sound port and one without. Audiences will report that the one with the sound port up close generally sound a little bit louder and a bit more clear while audiences that are beyond that, you know, a couple more feet beyond that, uh, generally will say that it doesn't really make that much of a difference the helicopter. I think the helicopter is probably, probably far away enough now. So in terms of sound and, and clarity, um, for me that's much less important. Um, there will be all sorts of debates online, and those are always very interesting to read, to see where everyone's coming from. Everyone's got a different opinion. You'll see many people who have zero experience with the sound port, but they'll tell you all day long uh, what's wrong with it and why they're not useful and why they're not good. And then you'll find people who have had experience with sound port, and they'll share their experience with it. So it's good to hear from everyone. But uh, for me, really the most important thing is I want to be able to hear the bass. My priority with this instrument was to play it you know, it's sort of in a, a, a campfire environment, just play along with guitars, but I've been uh, bringing it and playing at clubs and playing with other musicians, and that's been a heap of fun. And I, I think that uh, this works great in that environment, and it sounds loud enough, I never feel like I'm not making enough sound, um, and I think much of that really has to do with the octave pairs. <laughs> I really like 
about this particular instrument is it's got a real growl to it and it's taken me about a year to really keep working on this experimenting with different strings um, I kept increasing the uh, diameter of the sound port um, working with di different components the tailpiece um, carving out different uh, saddles uh, I had to replace the nut once or twice as I kept experimenting with that and working on um, uh, different things that I was trying. So this has been a great hobby instrument, but it's got a growl that I'm very happy with and I really enjoy playing this. I also have a resonator uh, bass. I'll share that with you guys next time as well. I really enjoy playing that as well. Um, and I, I got that bass recently and I thought, oh yeah, I'll have a mean growl, but I was surprised to find that this instrument actually has more of a growl. Uh, and a lot of that really has to do with the octave pairs. They're just, it sounds pretty cool is what it comes down to. Now, if you play with very high precision, you can hit just the guitar strings first, as you heard just then. But again, that's, that's a high precision thing something that's more suited for a studio, but if you're jamming and um, you're out playing with a bunch of people, you're, you're probably not likely to hit that kind of precision, especially when you're paying attention to what everyone else is doing. You're probably noticing I'm not playing much up here, and that's because, again, this is a pretty awful instrument. Once you get up here, the intonation really starts to suffer, and also there's, um, uh, I had to, to get the saddle very low. There's, there's a huge amount of work I had to do over months of experimenting, um, adjusting the truss rod, carving out the nut and the saddle, and the intonation here is as good as it's going to get, and it's still not great. So up to around here, uh, probably here, it, the intonation's all right. Up here, it's, it's just not great, and it's going to rattle. Um, these, um, um, unless I play extremely carefully, um, the bottom two strings will rattle around this area, and that's after filing down the uh, frets here and working on that. I've done all sorts of work, and it's playing as good as it's going to play. If I had six, uh, seven, eight thousand um, dollars, and I, I didn't have anything else to do with that money, uh, would I buy an acoustic bass made by a manufacturer that was that was built specifically as an eight-string bass? I, I would love to, uh, but I'm not a professional bassist, so um, it would really just come down to buying a very expensive toy. Well, let's put it this way. If I had a million dollars and uh, I'd already paid off all my bills, and then, yeah, I would, I would spend six to eight thousand dollars on an eight string acoustic bass, uh, but I don't have a million dollars, and um, I don't know when I will have a million dollars, so instead of waiting for that, I'll buy an eighty dollar bass, and I'll work on it for a little while so I can have an eight string bass. I'm pretty happy to, to share this all with you. And I hope that you guys have, have had a laugh and enjoyed me sort of belligerently drilling uh, a hole into this. I, I just did it for fun. You know, it's just a, it was meant to be just a funny video for people to get shocked by. Um, yeah, so thank you all for commenting. Thanks for stopping by. And I hope you enjoyed a look at this guy. If you want to hear more from it, obviously it's going to sound better indoors uh, where you get the sound uh, that reflects off the walls, it's reflecting off the other instruments. And, um, but I think it's nice to spend time outside under the sun and uh, breathe in some fresh air. So uh, I'm not a YouTuber, so I'm not going to ask you to subscribe or like or comment. I won't ask you for a Patreon, but I will ask you to take care of yourselves. Find out who really matters to you really think about who you love and who loves you back and take care of those people take care of yourself that's all I'm asking you to do I'll see you around take care <laughs>